In the intricate world of ants, the selection and creation of a queen is a process deeply embedded within their social structure and genetic mechanisms, reflecting a fascinating blend of biology, cooperation, and hierarchy. The life cycle of ants, much like that of other social insects, is organized around specific roles within the colony, and at the heart of this organization lies the queen. The queen's primary purpose is reproduction, laying thousands or even millions of eggs over her lifetime, thus ensuring the continuity and expansion of the colony. The selection of a queen, however, is not as simple as a single ant being chosen. It's a complex process influenced by genetics, environmental factors, and colony needs, demonstrating a highly evolved social system. To begin with, an ant queen is typically produced through a series of environmental triggers and specific genetic predispositions within the colony. In most ant species, queen selection begins in the larval stage, where certain larvae are singled out for potential queenhood. These larvae are given special attention and resources, receiving unique food sources rich in proteins, lipids, and hormones necessary for developing the physiological characteristics of a queen. Unlike worker ants, which are usually smaller and designed for colony maintenance tasks, a queen is larger and anatomically adapted for egg-laying, with a more robust body, wings, in many species, at least initially, and a physiology capable of sustaining high reproductive activity. In many ant colonies, the ability to produce a queen larva is partly genetic. Queen-destined larvae usually carry a particular genetic code that allows them to develop reproductive capabilities under the right conditions. However, environmental factors also play a crucial role. Certain cues, like the size of the colony, the availability of resources, and sometimes even pheromonal signals from the current queen, can influence whether a larva is nurtured into a queen. When a colony grows large enough to necessitate expansion or when the current queen's fertility declines, the workers may begin to prepare a new queen by nurturing specific larvae under the specialized regimen. In this way, the selection process of a queen is not strictly genetic or environmental but a finely tuned interaction between the two. The development of queen larvae is a critical phase. Worker ants diligently tend to these special larvae, feeding them nutrient-rich secretions. The hormonal composition of this diet plays a significant role in enabling the larvae to grow into a queen rather than a worker. In the absence of this special diet, the larvae would develop into a typical worker ant, sterile and designed to perform colony-supporting tasks. This food, often called, royal jelly, in some species, is high in proteins and essential lipids, setting off a chain reaction of hormonal and physiological changes within the developing larvae that primes them for a reproductive role. Once the larvae reach the pupil stage, they continue to receive close attention, with workers adjusting their care based on the needs of the growing queen to be. Upon emerging as adults, new queens typically go through a mating flight, known as the nuptial flight, which is crucial for the continuation of the ant lineage. During this flight, queens from different colonies leave their nests to mate with male ants from other colonies, thus ensuring genetic diversity. Mating usually takes place mid-air, after which the male ants, having fulfilled their reproductive role, often die. The mated queen then returns to the ground, where she sheds her wings and begins to search for a suitable location to start a new colony. In some ant species, the queen may return to her natal nest if conditions allow, while in others, she ventures out to establish her own colony independently. The new queen is equipped to lay fertilized eggs for the remainder of her life, as her body has stored the sperm needed for fertilization during the nuptial flight. This allows her to lay both fertilized and unfertilized eggs, producing workers and males, respectively. Fertilized eggs will develop into female ants, which can become either workers or, under certain conditions, additional queens, while unfertilized eggs produce male ants needed for mating purposes. The colony's social structure ensures that these roles are clearly defined, with workers taking care of the queen and ensuring her well-being while she focuses on reproduction. 
In situations where a queen dies prematurely or the colony requires additional queens for expansion, some species exhibit a fascinating adaptability. Worker ants may begin to feed select larvae with a queen-specific diet, effectively promoting them to queen status. In other species, however, when the queen dies, the colony may be doomed unless it has another queen already in place, as workers typically cannot reproduce. This dependence on the queen underscores her significance within the colony and highlights the tightly bound hierarchy in ant society. Ant colonies also use pheromones, chemical signals, as a means of communication. The queen releases specific pheromones that indicate her presence and health status to the rest of the colony. When the queen's pheromone levels decline, due to age, illness, or reduced fertility, the workers may interpret this as a signal that the colony needs a new queen. This decline in pheromone production can trigger the workers to begin nurturing new queen larvae, thereby ensuring the colony's longevity. The role of pheromones is therefore critical, serving as an invisible regulatory mechanism that maintains order within the colony. In some ant species, colonies are polygynous, meaning they can have multiple queens simultaneously. This strategy can offer certain advantages, such as increased reproductive output and the ability to quickly establish dominance in resource-rich environments. Polygyny, however, also introduces potential conflicts, as queens may compete for resources and influence within the colony. In such colonies, the workers play a mediating role, sometimes favoring one queen over another by adjusting their care and loyalty. These interactions create a dynamic environment where cooperation and competition coexist, showcasing the complexity of ant social structure. There are also cases in which certain ant species practice queen usurpation, where a newly mated queen attempts to infiltrate an established colony and replace its existing queen. This strategy, while risky, can allow a queen to bypass the difficult process of founding a new colony independently. The invading queen often kills the resident queen, subsequently releasing her own pheromones to integrate herself with the colony's workers. This process highlights the diverse strategies that ants have evolved for survival and reproduction, adapting to different environmental challenges and opportunities. The process of ant-queen selection is thus a delicate balance of genetics, environmental cues, and social dynamics. Each step, from the selection of queen larvae to the nuptial flight, is fine-tuned by millions of years of evolution. The role of the queen is indispensable, and her selection is one of the colony's highest priorities, ensuring not only the survival of the individual colony but also the perpetuation of the species. This process exemplifies the remarkable level of organization and resilience found in ant societies, where each member performs their role for the greater good of the colony, creating a superorganism that functions almost as a single entity. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.